Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. Today, we're doing a follow-up to last week's coverage on what sort of storage device you need for gaming right now. That video has done surprisingly well, so I'm back today to expand on the testing and bring even more information to the table regarding storage and load times in today's games. The main conclusion we found in the previous video was that the type of SSD you have in your system has little influence over game load times. The performance difference between an entry-level SATA SSD and a high-end PCIe 4.0 drive in many cases was nearly negligible, and even in the best cases, the fast SSD was only, say, 30% faster than the slow SSD at loading games. So long as you have an SSD and not a hard drive, given hard drives can be more than twice as slow, you'll be set. The reason why games don't see significant speedups from fast storage devices is that beyond SATA SSD performance, the SSD itself is no longer a bottleneck for most of the loading pipeline. That's because the game engines of today have been built with hard drives in mind. Think the super slow hard drives found in the PS4 and Xbox One. So they haven't bothered to do things like multi-thread the data streaming process. The end result is that once you have an SSD in your system, the CPU and other aspects become more important for loading the game and that's what we'll be looking at today. So our original testing centered around the Ryzen 9 3900 XT, which we used on an MSI X570 Tomahawk motherboard with each test SSD connected directly to the CPU to maximize the performance on offer with PCIe 4.0 storage. Today we're going to add three additional CPUs to our testing. One is the Ryzen 5 3600, same Zen 2 architecture but half the number of cores, down from 12 to 6. Then I'm also testing the slowest AM4 CPU I have on hand, which is the Ryzen 5 3400G, a 4-core, 8-thread processor using the older Zen Plus architecture. Both of these are being tested in the same X570 test system, although the 3400G doesn't support PCIe 4.0, so the 4.0 drive we'll be using today will drop down to PCIe 3.0 speeds. Then on the Intel side, I wanted to see how Ryzen and Intel's Comet Lake would fare for game loading. We know Intel processors have superior single thread performance as well as higher frequencies, which can impact game performance when CPU limited. So today I'm using the Cry 5 10600K in my Z490 test system, which allows for a core for core comparison with the Ryzen 5 3600. Both the AMD and Intel platforms are configured with the same hardware outside the motherboard and processor. So the same NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2080 Ti Founders Edition GPU, and the same dual channel kit of DDR4 3200 memory with XMP applied. Both systems also use PCIe 3.0 boot drives, although with different fresh installations, as we know, moving an AMD install over to an Intel system can have performance implications. To trim the fat a bit on our testing and make it simpler for us, we're testing these four CPUs today with four SSDs in seven benchmarks. That's still over 100 benchmark combinations, but a lot less than if we tested all 14 drives again with each CPU. The drives I've chosen span the four main categories we tested initially. The Corsair Force MP600 1TB is our PCIe 4.0 drive, although only two of the four CPUs support PCIe 4.0. Then there's the WD Black SN750 1TB, a PCIe 3.0 drive that sits in the mid-range of performance offered with that interface. Our SATA drive is the Samsung 870 Cuvo 8TB, a great choice for high storage capacity. And finally, we have the WD120 EMAS 12TB drive as our hard drive contender. I did get some comments on the last video asking why I didn't test with a 7200 RPM hard drive, and well, it comes down to how I did have a 7200 RPM drive on hand for the video, but it turned out to be dead on arrival. So I used an archive drive that I had available instead. Maybe I'll look into hard drive performance for game loading more in a future video in depth. So let's briefly revisit a synthetic test to see if CPU performance impacts anything here. So once again, we're looking at Crystal Disk Mark. For sequential reads, the main difference you'll see here is that for PCIe 4.0 drives, having a PCIe 4.0 enabled platform does deliver higher performance as you'd expect. Zen 2 is also capable of slightly higher low Q depth sequential reads even on a PCIe 3.0 drive versus Intel and Zen Plus, although we're only talking about a 12% difference here. For random reads, it's much the same story. The one outlier here is that on the SATA drive, Intel did achieve significantly higher random reads with a high Q depth and thread count, although there was no difference at low Q sizes. Then for sequential writes, most of the time performance is the same between each platform with a slight edge to AMD, whereas for random writes, there can be quite a performance gain with AMD over Intel with the PCIe drives. But as we've seen, synthetic performance doesn't translate well to real-world gaming performance. 
So let's look at some games. Horizon Zero Dawn was a title that did see some impact to load times based on the drive you were using, with fast drives being up to 30% faster than the slowest drives. However, what also appears true is that this game likes a fast CPU for loading as well. The Ryzen 9 3900 XT when using a PCIe SSD was about 11% faster than the Ryzen 5 3600 and Core i5 10600K, which delivered similar results. However, all three CPUs were similar when loading off a SATA drive. As expected, Ryzen doesn't benefit from having PCIe 4.0 here either. The big outlier here is the Ryzen 5 3400G. This CPU was noticeably slower for loading into the level compared to the other CPUs, and this scaled across all four storage options. When using PCIe storage, the 3400G was 33% behind the Ryzen 9 3900 XT, taking an additional 9 seconds to load. This CPU is also 24% slower when loading from a SATA SSD and 22% slower loading off a hard drive. To me, this suggests there are parts of loading this game that are fully CPU bound, and on a weaker CPU, this leads to slower loading even when the storage device itself is slow. In this title, it isn't a case where the hard drive ends up bottlenecking the load times overall. Some parts of the load appear storage bound, others CPU bound, so having fast components in both areas is key for loading. In Death Stranding, there was no significant difference in load times between AMD and Intel. Both the 3600 and 10600K loaded the game in approximately 16 seconds from an SSD, and 22 seconds from a hard drive, so there's no clear winner here. However, once again using the Ryzen 5 3400G was noticeably slower. In fact, there was almost a straight 4 second load penalty for this Zen Plus APU versus the other CPUs. 4 seconds slower with an SSD, and 4 seconds slower with a hard drive. Proportionally, the hit is more severe with an SSD, as the SSD itself is faster overall, but there is still a performance loss when loading from a hard drive. The Outer Worlds was an extremely interesting case for AMD versus Intel load times. Performance wasn't too different on Ryzen, even between the Ryzen 5 3400G and the Ryzen 9 3900 XT, with the Zen Plus APU being just a couple of seconds slower. However, Loading this game on the Core i5-10600K was significantly slower, in fact it took over twice as long on Intel compared to AMD, with Intel showing no significant performance gain loading from an SSD versus a hard drive. I was pretty convinced this was perhaps an error with my test setup that maybe came up when copying the games over, but even after a fresh install of the title downloaded from the Epic Games Store, the Intel system was still much slower for game loading. We do know that Ryzen processors tend to be faster core for core than Intel at decompression, but that doesn't explain this discrepancy entirely. Don't have a good answer for what's going on here, but I've quadruple checked the results and it's a bit of an outlier, so let's move on. In Red Dead Redemption 2, I was surprised to see no difference in load times between any of the CPUs tested. There is still that performance gap between hard drive and SSD load times, but the 3400G, which has been slower in every other title so far, holds up just as well as the 10600K or 3900 XT in this game. Given the slow loading times for Red Dead, I was expecting to see more of a CPU limitation here, with the game benefiting from maybe faster single core performance, but that isn't the case. In Assassin's Creed Odyssey, we have another situation where load times are influenced more by the CPU than the storage device outside of loading from a hard drive. There wasn't a whole lot separating AMD and Intel in this benchmark. Whether you choose a Ryzen 5 3600 or Core i5 10600K, there is not much of a difference in load times, while the 3900 XT was a single digit percentage faster. Given we're talking about just a 1 to 2 second difference, it's pretty negligible. However, the Ryzen 5 3400G was noticeably slower for loading. Like with Horizon Zero Dawn, the 3400G was 34% slower at loading Odyssey off a PCIe SSD compared to the 3900 XT, although this gap shrunk considerably when loading off a much slower hard drive. In a title like this, I'd say adding an extra 10 seconds on the load time is definitely noticeable. Finally, we have Planet Coaster. This is a title where game loading does favour Intel, as does performance in the actual game, because the engine really loves single thread performance and frequency. When loading our large test park, the 10600K was around 50 seconds faster at loading, which does sound significant on first glance. The overall percentage isn't quite as large sounding though, the 10600K is 13% faster at loading versus the 3600, and just 3% faster than the 3900XT, but a performance gain is a performance gain, and for those that love playing these sorts of building titles, Intel is the way to go for now. You can see the influence of CPU performance in particular when looking at the 3400G results. 
Here the 3400G is several minutes slower than other platforms at loading. While the 3400G takes 8 minutes to load off a SATA SSD, the 10600K loads in just 5 minutes 40 seconds and the 3600 in about 6 minutes 40 seconds. Given we are talking about a multiple minute gap, that's quite substantial and shows how important it is to have a current gen CPU architecture for loading. So what we've found in this testing is that in general, once you have some sort of SSD in your system, load times for games are more influenced by your CPU choice than the speed of your storage device. On an entry-level Ryzen 5 3400G system, swapping out a SATA SSD for a PCIe SSD is going to deliver less than a 20% performance gain. In fact, in titles like Horizon Zero Dawn, it's more like 10%, and in other games it could be 0%. But upgrade the 3400G to a Ryzen 5 3600, and suddenly that system is loading titles 30 to 50% faster in games like Horizon, Death Stranding, and Assassin's Creed Odyssey. While we didn't test with a massive amount of games in today's video, it does seem clear that you are more likely to see faster load times from a CPU upgrade than an SSD upgrade. And in games where the SSD does matter to a certain degree for loading, the CPU is still influential on load times and likely the more important component for getting a meaningful performance improvement right now. As for the battle of AMD versus Intel, they're honestly isn't that much separating the two brands for load times in most games we tested. The Outer Worlds was much faster on Ryzen, Planet Coaster was faster on Intel, and the rest of the time there was a negligible difference between the Ryzen 5 3600 and Core i5-10600K. Given there's a lot of variability between different titles, I don't think game load times are going to influence your CPU buying decision all that much right now. There are more important things to consider, like actual in-game frame rates and CPU price, for example. This testing also reinforces what we saw with the first video. Game load times aren't going to improve substantially without a reworking of game engines and how they load assets from storage. Simply having a lightning fast SSD and a top end CPU isn't giving us instant load times with existing games. That will only come from game developers rethinking and redesigning how they load from storage with more consideration for modern hardware like fast PCI SSDs and strong multi-core processors. So there's still quite a road to go for PC gaming before we see the fast load time benefits that Sony and Microsoft are promising from their next-gen consoles. It'll be very interesting to see how cross-gen games like Cyberpunk 2077 handle loading on PC, and whether these newer titles will place more of a focus on utilizing SSDs on PC than what came before. Interesting times ahead, that's for sure. Anyway, that's it for today's investigation of a bit of, I guess you'd call it CPU scaling across different games and SSDs for load times. Interesting results. We might continue to add to this with other stuff like perhaps more hard drives and a few other configurations that a few of you guys have been requesting in the comments. If you're interested in supporting our testing, we do have our Patreon page. Links are in the description below. You'll get access to our Discord chat, monthly live streams, behind the scenes videos, all that sort of stuff. You can also subscribe to get maybe more storage testing in the inbox uh, soon. Anyway, that's it. 20% Club, thanks for watching till the end, and I'll catch you in the next one.